By May of 2002, the cleanup officially ended, and FEMA issued a preliminary report concluding the sequence of events leading to the collapse of each tower could not be definitively determined. Months later, the National Institute of Standards and Technology began their study, but instead of a gumshoe inquiry that left no stone unturned, the investigations were treated more like a research project in which they waited for the information to flow in. In years later, NIST said that their analysis does not actually include the structural behavior of the towers after conditions for collapse initiation were reached, and they were unable to provide a full explanation of the total collapse. In other words, they stopped their study here and never addressed this or this. So in the final analysis, 9-11 was not considered a crime, most physical evidence was disposed of before the investigation even began, and they did not evaluate key evidence. And no agency could explain how the Twin Towers actually collapsed. But what if 9-11 was actually investigated as a crime rather than an act of war? How would we go about solving it, and would we arrive at the same conclusions? Sherlock Holmes said, when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. So before one tries to answer why it was done, or how it was done, or who did it, one first needs to know what it is. We need to understand what happened and what did not happen. We need to eliminate the impossible. So let's take a look and see what makes the most sense. The official conspiracy theory with 19 hijackers, or something else using the laws of physics applied to the evidence. A few minutes before this happened, we noticed this. NIST speculated that it was some type of aluminum mix, but provided no experimental confirmation of their theory. But others proved NIST wrong. In addition, iron microspheres were found all through the dust, confirming temperatures high enough to melt steel. NIST never explained these, but iron microspheres are a natural byproduct of a thermitic reaction. The media experts showed us that thermitic material could not melt steel. Despite 175 pounds of thermite packed around the steel column, it remained undamaged. But we showed that it could. And that thermite creates iron microspheres just like those found all through the dust. Yet we're supposed to believe that office fires, which burn a thousand degrees colder than what's needed to melt steel, somehow did this and made these. But thermite, which burns over 1500 degrees hotter than needed to melt steel and creates these natural byproducts, for some reason cannot do this. Regardless of what they would like you to believe, the melting of steel or iron by those office or jet fuel fires is impossible. And therefore, the official story can be eliminated. NIST never addressed the motion of this, but many other independent scientists, engineers, and physicists did. And while our media told us that this is what happened, they never explained what happened to the core. But in order to bend, crush, or move something below, any falling object must experience a jolt or momentary deceleration in order to apply a force that is larger than its own static weight. This jolt has been clearly measured with a natural gravitational collapse. As the falling floors contact the stationary structure below, the downward acceleration reverses momentarily imposing a jolt or force larger than its static weight, destroying the structure below. But surprisingly, when the fall of the tower was measured, there was no jolt at all. In other words, the instant after the falling floors should have impacted the lower undamaged floors, the upper floors actually sped up, meaning that the force from the falling floors was less when accelerating down than when they were at rest. Some other force must have weakened the stronger lower structure first, allowing the roof to continually accelerate down. A downward accelerating object crushing a lower structure that once supported it statically but experiencing no jolts acting by gravity alone is impossible, and therefore the official story can be eliminated. Just after this happened, the wind blew the dust exposing some inner core columns some call the spire. Office fires cannot cut steel, yet white smoke trailed from cut segments of falling steel, and the top of the spire was not bent from any impact above. The spire stood as a freestanding structure with columns swaying but resisting like a flagpole. And rather than tipping over like a tree, suddenly this structure dropped straight down even though there was no load above. A freestanding structure collapsing straight down through its path of most resistance by gravity alone is impossible. 
and therefore the official story can be eliminated. A month after this, Professor Bazant and others published a paper that explained how the towers fell, even though NIST could not explain it after years of study. Their paper described how the upper smaller blocks of floor crushed down the larger undamaged structure below down to the ground and then the upper block crushed itself up. Not only was no upper block observed impacting the lower sections, but why the spire was not crushed as the upper block fell remained unexplained. And Newton's third law tells us that interactions between colliding objects are always equal and opposite meaning that any upper smaller block of floors would have also destroyed itself when impacting a larger structure below, well before it could have crushed all the way down to the ground. And no experiment has ever demonstrated this remarkable crush down, crush up concept endorsed by NIST. The theory of a smaller top block crushing down a stronger, larger, lower structure of similar material is impossible, and therefore the official story can be eliminated. Some unique steel that was razor sharp and looked like Swiss cheese was found at ground zero. Firewise professors found eutectic formations, a phenomenon never before observed in building fires. It was a surprise uh, to me because it was so eroded and deformed and so um, we took it for analysis in the lab. When we did the analysis we actually identified it as an, a, a, a liquid containing iron, sulfur and oxygen which is the same materials found in thermate and causes similar eutectic formations. And even though the New York Times described this as perhaps the deepest mystery uncovered in the investigation, NIST never solved where the sulfur came from. Yet the media experts claimed they were able to unravel the mystery. The claims of the mysterious melted steel from Tower 7 has been unraveled. And they also said they found the source of the sulfur. The sulfur came from masses of gypsum wallboard that was pulverized and burnt in the fires. Even though gypsum is routinely used as fireproofing around steel, NIST and the media experts never conducted any experiments to back up their claim. But when gypsum and building material was packed around a steel beam and burned at similar temperatures for long durations, nothing of the sort happened. Yet an experiment with thermate did make the steel razor sharp and look like Swiss cheese. Since eutectic formations have not been replicated experimentally, the official story is impossible, and therefore the official story can be eliminated. This building was never hit by an airplane, or even mentioned in the official investigation. It looked exactly like a controlled demolition. Yet NIST said it was a progressive collapse caused by normal office fires, but it fell for over a hundred feet at total free fall, meaning the underlying supports had to have been removed first, allowing it to fall freely. Since a progressive collapse will not allow free fall, the official story is impossible, and therefore the official story can be eliminated. The USGS and independent physicists analyzed plenty of dust, collected by some from inside buildings near ground zero. In addition to small iron spheres, they found active nanothermite, a military explosive that could be sprayed or painted on, invented only a few years before and not commercially available. Being an engineered material with a special matrix, it cannot form naturally because that would defy the law of entropy. And it's not just primer paint, as it does not have the properties of paint, react like paint, or even look like paint. The formation of nanothermite naturally is impossible, and therefore the official story can be eliminated. NIST never looked at the actual collapse mechanism and just assumed that collapse was inevitable. But real world experiences demonstrate that collapse is certainly not inevitable, and therefore the official story can be eliminated. Could 9-11 have been planned as a new Pearl Harbor necessary to galvanize popular support for preemptive wars using our military to secure trillions in oil and mineral wealth? Were explosives allowed in the towers by the security company that the president's brother was on the board of? Could cutter charges have been placed in the core when the elevator upgrades were made? Could nanothermite have been sprayed by unsuspecting workers when upgrades in the towers were made? 
Could computer-controlled explosives have brought down the towers at almost free fall in an attempt to hide the action behind a curtain of falling debris? Was this a shock and awe event intended to scare Americans into giving up their liberties, controlled dissent, while making billions for the security and military-industrial complex? Could it have been used to remove obsolete towers and avoid costly asbestos removal, allowing modern structures to be built in their place? Was it used to hide financial issues, destroy key SEC files, address the Iraq petrodollar problem, or murder those investigating over two trillion lost in the Pentagon? Are people talking, but we're not listening? Meanwhile, the authorities and media attack those searching for truth while ignoring the science and evidence, including hundreds of eyewitnesses. Actually, devices that were planted in the building. There was a, another explosion that took... Well, I'm in a building clear enough. Um, explosion. Second explosion. Had that big explosion. From Heavy duty explosion. How many people out? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Explosions yeah. And the explosion blew and it knocked everybody over. Huge explosion that we all heard. A big explosion. An explosion. Explosion. And another explosion. Explosion, a lot. We heard a big explosion. Big explosion. Explosions. Of the explosion. Just explosion. This was the result of something that was planned. This is not, it's not accidental that the first tower just happened to collapse and then the second tower just happened to collapse in exactly the same way. How they accomplished this, we don't know. Were those in the towers exploded into thousands of pieces just collateral damage for a much larger operation? It's not impossible. But this, 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 and this are impossible with the official story. Yet every single one are a direct result of incendiaries, explosives, and controlled demolition. People think that the investigation was all about truth and justice, but a lawyer for the 9-11 Commission explained what it's really all about. When 3,000 people were murdered that day, because it's always about protection of the institution in the end. Wow. But a few of us still think that truth, freedom, and justice for those murdered is what it should be all about. Oh, 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 oh,